Welcome to our lecture this evening. My name is Emily Knight. I'm the Museum Services Coordinator at the Bernard A. Zuckerman Museum of Art. We are thrilled to have Dr. Vanessa Davidson here today. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of information about Vanessa first, and then I will take, turn it over to her. Um, Vanessa K. Davidson is Curator of Latin American Art at the Blanton Museum of Art at the University of Texas in Austin. She curated Oscar Munoz, Invisibilia, 2021-2022, this Colombian artist's first U.S. retrospective, which was exhibited at the Phoenix Art Museum and the Blanton Museum of Art. Vanessa will discuss Munoz's retrospective, the work that he has produced throughout his career, and the work selected for the exhibition at the ZMA Recollections. Dr. Vanessa K. Davidson received her BA in Hispano American Literature from Harvard University and studied Latin American art and Argentine poetry at the Universidad de Buenos Aires, Argentina, and Portuguese at the University of Sao Paulo. She was awarded a Fulbright Hayes Fellowship for doctoral dissertation research in Argentina and Brazil, focusing her dissertation on male art, text-based conceptualism, and performance in Brazil and Argentina from the 1960s to the 1980s. She received her PhD in 20th and 21st century Latin American art history from New York University's Institute of Fine Arts. Dr. Davidson has worked at Boston's Museum of Fine Arts as well as the Metropolitan Museum of Art. She's also worked for eight years as the Sean and Joe Lamp Curator of Latin American Art at the Phoenix Art Museum and there organized 12 large scale exhibitions, two of which traveled internationally. With Dr. Sergio Besa, she co-curated Paolo Bruschi, Art is Our Last Hope in 2014. Accompanying this project, she also curated the largest international exhibition of contemporary male art in the US since the 1970s. Focus, Latin America, Art is Our Last Hope, 2014 to 2015. She was the curator of Horacio Zabala, Mapping the Monochrome, Phoenix and Buenos Aires, 2016 to 2017, and co-curator with Calve Alves of Past, Future, Present, Contemporary Brazilian Art from the collection of the Musee de Arte Moderno, Sao Paulo, in Phoenix and Sao Paulo in 2017 and 2019. Her most recent project was as co-curator of the 37th Biennial Panorama Exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in Sao Paulo, entitled Under the Ashes, Embers, for which a group of 26 of the most compelling and diverse contemporary artists working in Brazil were selected to present work, some commissioned solely for this landmark exhibition. After its conclusion in Sao Paulo in the early 2023, so upcoming this year, this exhibition will travel to the interior of Brazil so that it can be appreciated by an even broader audience. Thank you so much, Dr. Davidson, for being here this evening. We are thrilled to have you share insight into Oscar Munoz's exhibition and the fantastic retrospective. Without further ado, please welcome Vanessa. Thank you so very much. I Gosh, that was a mouthful. I'm sorry to have uh, put you through that, Emily. I'd like to thank uh, Cynthia Thompson and all of the members of the ZMA staff who made the Recollections um, exhibition possible. Um, I'm dying to see it. I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen the images of it, but um, hopefully uh, tonight's lecture will contextualize it for you. What I'd like to do um, in about 50 minutes is to give you an overview of, of um, Invisibilia, which I curated um, in 2021, 22, um, which traveled from Phoenix uh, to the Blanty Museum of Art. Um, and uh, I'd like to do that because it will, it will help to contextualize uh, the work um, in uh, Recollections um, as, as the works um, are kind of chameleons. They, they, they can change uh, meanings, they can develop more nuance when placed in proximity to different works. Um, and in each different iteration of this exhibition, um, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing how the meanings of the works have evolved um, depending on different curatorial constraints, different space constraints, different, um, different uh, architectures, different ideas. 
Um, and uh, I've worked very closely with Oscar on this project, and it's been an honor and a privilege um, to curate his first um, US retrospective. So um, let's see. Oscar Munoz, um, let's start with an introduction to Oscar, was born in 1951 in Bayan, Colombia. Um, he, his family soon afterward uh, moved to uh, Cali where he lives and works. Um, and uh, he is one of the most important uh, artists working in Colombia today, if not one, one of the most innovative. Um, and just to give you a sense of the scope of his impact um, uh, of, of his works in this country, I added a few international collections to that at the beginning, but I wanted to uh, share with you that um, at the, the, that MoMA and the Hirschhorn and LACMA and um, the SF MoMA and the Museum of Contemporary Los Angeles, all of these, the Pettis Museum, the Denver Museum of Art, um, lots of museums, as well as the Blanton, um, the MFA Houston, lots of museums um, in this country actually own his works, but there's never been a full scale retrospective um, of his career in this country, although he's had deserved um, accolades um, and retrospectives that have traveled throughout Latin America um, and Europe previously. Um, and it was high time that uh, that that uh, U.S. audiences were introduced to a larger um, perspective of his evolving practice. Um, and this exhibition, uh, Invisibilia, was long, long overdue. Now, um, it it began with um, his early uh, charcoal drawings from the 1970s, and it continued up to 2021 with new work that made its debut in the show, as you'll see. Um, I want to uh, share a little bit about um, what you'll be seeing in terms of the themes um, that Oscar's works engage with most often. What I'm showing you here is a video called Retrato, which is retrato, which can mean um, portrait or I try again. Um, this is Oscar's hand trying to uh, sketch a portrait of himself, a self-portrait uh, from a photograph using a, a brush wet with water on hot concrete so that as soon as he finishes, uh, the portrait has evaporated and he has to begin again like Sisyphus doomed uh, to endless failure and rolling that boulder up the hill. And this video continues for an uninterrupted 28 minutes. Now, there are five things. Um, I kind of wanted to reduce it down to a few themes. So there are five things I think you should know about Oscar in terms of the works that I'll show you this evening. Uh, the first is that he defines his practice as an effort to hacer memoria, to make memory. Um, and you'll see that the, the theme of memory um, is very potent throughout his work um, and throughout his thinking. Um, now, he also refers to life in Colombia as an immemorial setting, a, a setting in which violence extends back beyond memory, beyond, uh, beyond uh, the beginnings of memory. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in, in a moment. Um, and the second thing I want you to, to know and to think about while we're walking through this exhibition um, is that he... Um, has said that he uses photography as both reference and metaphor. Um, and I, I wrote a text actually for the ZMA, um, which I believe is a brochure um, about this idea of using photography as, as both reference and metaphor that you can pick up when you're in the galleries. Uh, but I want you to think about that as we're going through the exhibition, that how can photography be both reference and metaphor for something else? Um, entirely. And I think what's what's so radical about Oscar's career is that throughout uh, since the the late 1980s, what he's done is to deconstruct the medium of photography um, and to splice um, photographic processes um, with drawing, printmaking, painting, as you see here, um, installation, video um, and even uh, even interactive works. Um, and in so doing, in the third point, he focuses on what he calls, quote unquote, the, in, the intangible and the impermanent. Um, so he makes elusive phenomena like memory, history, and time 
he gives them he gives them he gives them visible physical form but only fleetingly as you see here um just just as we too are are so quick to forget and this underlies my uh title of the word the word invisibilia because his images uh lie in this liminal space they hover in this liminal space between um appearance um and erasure now the fourth thing i want you to remember and i want you to know about oscar is that he equates the transience of images, the inherent transience of images, uh, with the fragility of memory and the precariousness of life. Um, and he highlights and underscores in many of his works the human impossibility to defend against the impermanence of all three. Um, that's a very important point, um, and it, 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 it comes to the fore in many different media. Um, and although the fifth point, fifth and last point, is that although he's, his work is deeply rooted in the Colombian context, it has universal resonance. And that brings me uh, to a sidebar because I want, this is Retrato um, shown um, on the High Line um, in New York in 2013, projection on the side of a building uh, visible from the High Line. But what I wanted to just remind you um, in case uh, you're not, um, it's it's not uh, a, for the first thing in your mind is that Colombia has suffered the the anguish of a series of, of, of civil wars since the 19th century. And the violence intensified in 1948 to 1958, that decade that they called La Violencia simply. Um, and uh, it is estimated by the Cent National Center for Historic Memory that um, approximately 200,000 people were killed during that time. Um, and tensions between paramilitary and military groups um, since the 1960s. Um, and then, of course, the clashes between uh, the military and the drug cartels called the, the so-called cartel wars beginning in the 1980s intensified that violence um, even more so that uh, the, by some estimates between 1958 and 19 and 2013, rather, um, an additional uh, 260,000 people uh, had been killed, uh, most of them who were civilians caught in the crossfire. Um, so I mentioned this history just to keep fresh in your mind the context from which uh, many of these works um, draw their visceral sense of the, precari the precariousness of life. It's very important to, to remember that. Um, although in his artistic practice, um, Munoz's approach to violence um, as, a, as a dire reality in Colombia is, is really more philosophical than political. Um, as he stated in 2005, quote, no doubt the fact of having lived and grown up in Cali, in Colombia, a country with numerous complex and thorny conflicts contributes to a certain outlook, a drive maybe, a need to explore this to some extent in one's work. The development of this reality, of these experiences, taking them to a poetic level, to a universal level, and to a level that has to do with artistic language is more or less what I've explored in my work. Now on to the curatorial gymnastics uh, that happened behind the scenes. This is uh, my floor plan, my very uh, tidy yet very messy um, floor plan uh, for the Phoenix Art Museum installation. As you see, we have 10,000 square feet here. Um, and I divided the exhibition, which the entrance is right here, you see with my mouse, um, into four sections. We had this wonderful atrium in which to install ambulatorio. And we had these three generous video rooms. Um, so I had four curatorial sections. And then when we moved to the Blanton, uh, we're currently under construction. So uh, this passageway that you see here used to be gallery space, but we had to um, insert a door um, on, in this wall because they were working on the other entrance. So I lost a good thousand square feet of, uh, of uh, real estate and I only had 6,000 square feet um, of, of exhibition space, but we managed actually to install um, almost everything. It took us a good three weeks. It was almost like a game of, a game of chess to make everything fit, uh, but we did, uh, Oscar and I. 
Um, and uh, what I'm going to show you this evening are images mostly of the Blanton's installation, uh, but some um, of Phoenix as well. This is the benefit of the model that I had to use um, at the Blanton um, and how we had envisioned um, it would look. And this is what Ambulatorio looked like in our atrium. Uh, this is how it looked um, as it was being installed and finally appreciated by the first uh, several visitors. Um, and Ambulatorio is a pivotal work that's also in the ZMA exhibition. Um, it translates to walking, it has two translations in English, the title Ambulatorio. Um, it means both walking place and outpatient ward. Um, and it's from the 1990s, the years um, of the cartel wars that especially hit hard in cities like Cali um, and Medellin. And uh, Munoz explained, quote, this piece evokes the traces, the bits that are left behind at the end in the days after the bomb has exploded, fragments of glass remain like vestiges encrusted in the pavement, practically unnoticeable and come, until we come to step on them. Because as you walk across the surface, uh, what you're looking at is an aerial map of Kali covered in sheet glass. So it fractures and crackles underfoot. Um, by the time it arrived at the M at the ZMA, I'm afraid it had already fractured and crackled under other feet, which is actually very interesting to think about. So it may not, uh, you may not get the same sensation, but what you will get is this, as you see close up, view of a map that is misaligned deliberately. This is the view of it at Phoenix Art Museum, um, of course, enjoyed by visitors um, of all ages. Um, and this is the very dramatic and, and meditative view of the ZMA. Um, and as you see, the parts of the map are misaligned. Um, and so the map itself cannot be read to reflect the irrationality of that violence. Um, and I love this installation at the, at the ZMA uh, with the with the with um, a dystopia the the video that we'll speak about in a moment on one side, um, and the Narciso Secos, the dry Narcissi uh, that we'll speak about uh, presently um, on the other, as if it were um, as if it were a a terrain to traverse in order to reach these. And as you'll see, the only constant with um, which I'm tracing with my mouse is the River Kali, which runs through the map. Um, undisturbed. Um, now, at the uh, since I didn't have that much real estate um, in at the Blanton because of the construction, I pulled the cases out um, because I, I I didn't want to have too much furniture in the galleries themselves, and I called this little section here, which as you see here is still under installation, um, elusive text because. Um, since the early 1990s, really, um, over the last 20 years, perhaps, better, better said, um, Munoz has approached um, text um, and books and newspapers as materials to be manipulated, um, uh, as raw materials that to be manipulated metaphorically. Um, and what you're seeing here is a piece called Pais Tiempo, uh, which derives from two newspapers, El Tiempo, which is the national newspaper of Colombia, and El País, which is the local newspaper of Cali. And what he's done um, is to co collect certain newspapers whose, whose, uh, whose title pages really stood out to him as expressing the same information. I remember this immemorial context I referred to, this immemorial uh, violence, uh, the, the, the newspapers whose contents seem to have already been written uh, before, that he had read before. Um, and what he did was he had them pyro engraved so that when you turn their pages, little by little, the content becomes more and more faint until it is left as a blank page. Uh, so this is the succession um, of Pais Tiempo. And he said about this work, Quote, Pais Tiempo is an archive that does not circulate information, at least not the way a newspaper does. It transmits feelings, a certain unpleasant state of mind, a sense of unease. The news repeats from page to page until it becomes almost imperceptible marks on paper. 
these are first pages of newspapers that I kept because somehow they caught my attention on account of their layout, the phrases they repeat because they belong to the present but feel like we already read them long ago. They give me a sensation that is difficult to explain with words. I think of Wittgenstein's phrase, quote, my grief is no longer the same. A memory which was still unbearable to me a year ago is now no longer so. And these are actually very beautiful objects to behold. Um, as you see here, the beautiful pyro engraving and the and the the intricate, almost lace-like texture of the paper um, is something uh, that that you would not anticipate. But um, something that also this 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 formal beauty, um, despite obscuring a book's content, is something that he pursued also in a more recent work, Libro Yerto, the open book of 2019. And what you're seeing here um, is a picture of Oscar's hand turning the page of a book, but there seems to be another hand turning the page as well. And this is actually a ghost um, reflection. It's, a, it's, a, it's an imprint from the other side of the paper. Um, and he wanted this to be um, a book that was at once transparent and opaque because the focus, the, photog the, the, the photographs focus on the hand makes the text it's supposedly reveal. It's, it's meant to suppose it supposedly reveal um, absolutely indecipherable. So an open book is not quite so. Um, and this is dystopia, dystopia. What he's done here is to silk print, uh, to silk screen, uh, or rather screen print uh, with charcoal dust, uh, the words of um, of uh, George Orwell's book 1984 onto a sheet of paper, which he then slowly um, uh, um, sub, uh, submerges into water so that uh, this is meaning that has been made material and thought made visible in the form of text, but it becomes incomprehensible as soon as it touches the water and the words uh, fall apart into letters, which very soon uh, themselves fall apart into dis indistinguishable charcoal marks. So this idea um, that we spoke about when we were talking about his textual works is this idea, there's an expression in, in, in Spanish called to pasar la página, meaning to turn the page, literally, to, to leave something behind, to try and forget it deliberately, uh, to start a new chapter. Um, and this was something that, uh, that Colombians tried to do, he said, uh, to forget the violence, to, 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 to move beyond it because there was nothing else uh, to, to console them about it. Um, and that was very important uh, to him when we were thinking about these works, this idea of pasando la página. Um, this is a work that did not make it into the exhibition. Um, he's still working on it. He wasn't satisfied with it. It's called Atlas Leve or Mild Atlas. Uh, we did publish it in the catalog, but he was not satisfied with the way it was turning out. So we did not end up including it in the exhibition. So that's just a sneak peek of, of what he's working on now. Um, and... Uh, this is of the uh, the exterior of the exhibition with retrato um, um, uh, projected on this wall as kind of an opener um, for the exhibition itself. Now, the other thing that I wanted to have directly at the exhibition's opening was this work called Aliento or Breath. Um, these seem like regular plastic uh, uh, metal discs until you approach and your breath, the condensation from your breath reveals um, the oh, portraits from obituaries um, of people of desaparecidos, people who have been disappeared in the violence, um, who stay as, as long as you're breathing on them, but then when you move away, they disappear. Um, but of course it was in the middle of the pandemic um, and it was not advisable uh, to have uh, people breathing on the same on the same um, on the same surfaces, and so we, I decided uh, instead to feature this work, the Line of Destiny, um, as kind of the central work that draws you into the exhibition. Um, it's from two thousand six. Um, it doesn't have sound. What you're looking at is a projection of Oscar's face, a photograph of Oscar's face upon a pool of water in his hand.
And of course, he cannot hold the water. So little by little, it slips through his fingers and the image vanishes with it. So that at the end of the video, you're left with just a few drops of water and his lifeline, which of course is the translation of line of death of, of Línea del Destino in Spanish. Now, next to this, uh, we what, what I decided to do in this first gallery at the Blanton was to create kind of a portrait gallery. Uh, this is El Juego de las Probabilidades, uh, which is a work that's really a play on self-portraiture. What, what Oscar did here um, was to cut up uh, official photographs of himself from passport photos to driver's licenses to student IDs uh, from periods throughout his life um, and then splice them together again. Um, and to give you a sense of the scale of the of the photographs, they're 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 tiny. He holds them in his hand, but then he he amplifies them so that you're actually looking almost face to face with these with these likenesses. Um, and he said he did this to see which could possibly resemble him, which could possibly look like the future Oscar. But what he also did in this work was really to subvert um, the official kinds of images, the official kinds of documentation uh, that are used to chart one on their path throughout life uh, by the system. And directly across from this is a work that's called Four by Three. Um, when he installed this at the More Charpentier Gallery in Paris, um, it seemed almost to be infinite um, on their white walls. Uh, we only had 40 of, of these panels mounted um, in our gallery. And from afar, it looks as if uh, these. this is a typical modernist grid, um, perhaps um, evoking the Bauhaus or something um, of that ilk, or perhaps um, a, a, a series of, of drawings or paintings that uh, are looking at the windows across from you in a, in a high rise. But as you draw closer, you realize that actually there's a bit of a, a chin or a bit of hair or a bit of a neck. And what you're looking at are the remains of passport photographs, uh, the faces of, of which have been excised, erased. Um, and he calls these four by three because that's the, the size, four centimeters by three centimeters of the passport photos. So these these so these anonymous souls have become specters, but it seems as if they could continue infinitely and they can't help but remind us of the disappearances of the disappeared dead um, in Colombia. And I wanted to show these uh, uh, in proximity because of course um, they really do show the idea of presence and absence in Oscar's work that is so very strong. Um, and this is an overview of the gallery itself as we turn the corner and move into the next gallery, which is, um, this is the sight line. This is a work um, that's called Lacrimarios so or tear, tear collectors that we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but first, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the earliest works in the exhibition, which are these. Uh, now, our Oscar actually began his artistic career um, drawing uh, solely with charcoal on paper. Um, and these are the earliest works in the exhibition. This is from 1977. This is actually from the Blanton's own collection. Um, and it's it's only black black uh, chalk on paper. He achieves these marvelous effects of light and shadow and 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 all of these details um, just with black chalk um, and, and an eraser. Um, it's, it's quite extraordinary. He actually was a prodigy, had his first exhibition um, at the age of 14. So when he entered drawing school, he was already very well equipped to absorb new techniques. Um, and this is uh, charcoal on paper became his favorite me medium. Um, and when I when we brought this from uh, the vault and put it on blocks to install it, um, he stood and looked at it for about 
th three or four minutes, which doesn't seem like a very long time, but it actually is because he hadn't seen it for 50 years. Uh, but he remembered this little this little flap of fabric that he left hanging out of the suitcase. And and you have the impression in these drawings that someone's something's about to happen. You don't you don't understand if this woman is leaving or coming, if she's just arrived or if she's about to go somewhere or who she's waiting for. Um, now, in the next uh, series that he did called Inquilinatos or Tenements, um, the, the, he, he based these on the, the, the large mansions um, in Cali uh, that he and his friend Fernel Franco, the, the Colombian photographer, would go um, and explore in the slums uh, these these big mansions that have been subdivided into into tenements uh, apartments, and then he would imagine um, he would imagine the lives of those uh, within. So here, for example, in this very uh, dark image, you see something happening. There's a there's a there's a hint of a neck. There's a hint of a collarbone here, and a man and a woman in an, in an embrace. And here. Um, across the hall and in a separate apartment, a woman um, also half naked. And you see the joy of this child um, as as he runs out the door to play and the the, the sheen of the light upon upon the 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 the, the floor um, just just achieved with, with charcoal on paper. Um, and I think it's very important to remember that uh, actually, Oscar used photography um, as a guide in some of these early drawings, um, these later later early drawings. Uh, what he said, however, was, quote, in, the, in those initial moments, a conceptual interest for photography was not yet present. It was rather like a mediation between the real world and, and drawing, a translation that gave documentary that gave a documentary and atmospheric character to my work that it did not have before. And um, I, I show you this drawing called Levantamientos, um, which has lots of different meanings in Spanish, but uh, he this was a transitional piece, a kind of a bridge piece between uh, the Cortinas de Baño, which would be his first piece of experimenting with photography that I'll show you in a moment, and those early drawings. And these are just created with frottage on the floor. So he would place these, these large sheets of paper, paper on the floor and uh, trace the tiles with graphite. He called them drawings of objects, and then he would crumple them up and give them these three-dimensional shapes. Um, and those were bridge pieces, um, as he said, uh, between uh, his drawings um, and and his later deconstruction of photography. And I think that his his deconstruction of photography was so radical because he actually uh, explored its creative poss possibilities independently. Uh, he said, quote, my drawings began to evaporate, to become faint in an attempt to transform materiality, to seek more a sensation than a presence. From there, I went on to make shower curtains, but this was a very complex development. It seems simple, but that step of giving up the support that I've been working on for years was a difficult investigation. And here I'm showing you uh, the, the Cortinas de Baño, the shower curtains installed um, at the Blanton Museum of Art. And what the way the the, the creation of these uh, was achieved by stereographing images, uh, photographs of people in the bath. Um, upon actual shower curtains themselves and then dripping ink down them. Uh, this is the method of their creation. You see them here being 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 fabricated. Um, and what we find is these the images of these haunting specters that we walk among and we're supposed to walk among them like voyeurs um, in their at, the, at their most unguarded, they're nude, they're unguarded, they're they're at their most intimate. Um, performing their daily ritual, and yet we interrupt that, and we um, this is how we install them you, you, hanging from the ceiling. Um, and it, it was very interesting to see people interacting with them, and uh, especially during the pandemic, because they they they're shadowy bodies um, that 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 are that are that are for some were haunting, but for others were just beautiful to behold. Um, for me, they were both.
Um, but this was his first a foray into experimenting with the creative possibilities um, of using photographic processes. Um, and you'll see that he, he would return again and again to this idea of taking the photographic image and 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 taking it to a place somewhere between materialization and dematerialization um to 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 use again as we spoke at the beginning photography as both reference um and metaphor and in some of these not in the ones that we showed in our exhibition but in some of the series there are actually uh individuals washing blood off their hands and their feet uh which of course is a haunting reminder of of the violence in colombia uh, this is a full uh, a fuller view of the gallery, but I want to focus on Los Tisnados, which is this work here that was lent to us by the Museo Nacional de Colombia in Bogota. Uh, Tisnados means tainted, but it was actually the name of a paramil paramilitary group that arose to wreak havoc um, in Cali in the 1990s. Um, and what Oscar began to do during that time was to um, consult the Cronica Roja, which is like kind of like uh, page six, it's kind of like it's 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 uh, it's the tabloids um, and, and they would publish um, photos of unidentified um, uh, uh, people who had been killed um, in the violence, hoping that someone could identify them. But what he would do is he would take those photographs as a starting point and work and rework them uh, with with gesso and charcoal um, on board until the bodies and the faces become nearly abstract and almost unrecognizable. And this is perhaps the only one in the series that that really does look like a body. But he said that he that he 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 perceived a very strong connection between the charcoal, which is a burned substance, a, a living substance that has been burned and reduced to dust, and that violence. Um, and he would continue to use charcoal dust in such evocative works um, as the Lacrimarios, uh, the tear collectors, uh, which you see here, which were done uh, 10 later, 10 years later, approximately. Um, and this uh, work was also actually based upon a violent incident. Um, a young woman who was studied, studying fine arts uh, in Cali left for the Choco region um, and was never seen again. And it turned out uh, that um, she was abducted by the paramilitaries um, and uh, as Oscar recounted one day, quote, I saw her father on a news program detailing the tragedy and among other things, he detailed that they had opened her body so that it could not float um, in the water of the river. I spoke with people who knew her and began to reconstruct her memory, her past thinking of an image of her that would always float, that would never sink. So what he did in the series was to create uh, uh, glass, bo glass boxes, which he fills with water, and then he silk screens on top an image in charcoal dust, and then he closes the lid. And the natural uh, process of condensation um, evaporation and condensation uh, causes little tears um, uh, to, to form on the top of the, on the underside of the lid that then fall down and distort the image. And he was, and the way that you see the image is reflected upon the wall behind uh, the boxes because they're lit from underneath. Um, and the way that uh, these images appear for, this is for example, um, a political demonstration uh, that resulted in violence. This is uh, an image of a flood. Um, and this is an image um, and a newspaper article about children having to pass by a FARC outpost, uh, a paramilitary outpost on their way to school. Uh, the way that you experience these um, is, a, is in a very uncomfortable way. Um, and what he wanted to do here in these in these in these in these little tear collectors was to spotlight images and events and stories and histories that were not front page news in Colombia because Saha Kaim's disappearance was not front page news. He was outraged to find it in the back pages of the newspaper because it was such a common occurrence in Colombia. So all of these occurrences uh, therefore then take center stage um, in these works. 
Now, um, moving on to the other uh, side of the exhibition space um, in uh, at the Blanton, this is an overview um, of the uh, memory of the first memory amnesia gallery. Um, I wanted to um, underscore the ways in which uh, the works of art um, kind of, as, as I mentioned the, at the beginning, kind of take on new nuances when they're placed in proximity uh, to others. Uh, this is the first video that um, Oscar ever produced. It's from 2001, it's called Narciso. Um, and it's very important, I believe, that it's uh, the first video should be based on a photograph of, of Oscar himself. What you're looking at is an outline in charcoal dust that's been silkscreened onto the top of a sink filled with water. And as the video progresses, um, the, uh, the water slowly uh, flows down the drain um, and, excuse me, and the image distorts and disappears until it's just charcoal fragments um, at the end, uh, at the at the at the bottom of the of the receptacle. Um, and he said, "quote What I did in this video was like a metaphor for a lifetime. It also has that bib biblical element that you are dust and you become dust again, like that image that changes shape and then disappears. I also include a speaker that produces the sound of the water filling and draining." There is a form of inhalation, of exhalation, of filling and emptying of life and death. And other works um, in the exhibition have life cycles as well. This is a series called Narcissos in Proceso that he actually began um, about six years before um, he, he he did his first video of work, the Narciso, but it's 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 based on also on an image of himself, the same image of himself as a young man. Um, at, at least this this one is um, they're they're based on different images. But what he does is to fill this these recipients with water, then place paper, um, leaves of books, uh, maps, um, fragments of paper upon the top of the water that floats. And then on, on top of that, he silk screens and charcoal dust. Um, an image of his face. And this is an example of, of how it's done. You see him doing it here. Um, and this is what it looks like when he's finished. And over the course of the exhibition, of course, there the someone might jostle the 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 pedestal and it and it could 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 the 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 image might be uh, slightly jarred or the air current could ripple the surface of the water. Uh, but the most important thing that happens um, is that the water itself evaporates, uh, leaving uh, the narcissi, the dry narcissi. These are called narcissus in proceso, narcissi in progress. Uh, and these are the narcissus secos, the dry narcissi, which are the results that come from the narcissi that have been left to evaporate on their own. And the image is left distorted upon the bottom of the container. So he gives these works life cycles. Um, and that's very important um, also when we consider the next few works. And these are the narcissus secos that are included at the Zuckerman and um, although uh, they're Narcissus Secos, the dry Narcissi, it's almost as if uh, he looks as if he's drowning in these in these photographs. Um, and I should mention this belongs to the Blanton. Uh, thankfully, we're, we're so lucky to have it. And when I asked Oscar um, who this young woman was, he laughed and said, what are you talking about? That's me with long hair. So it uh, they really are Narcissus. They're 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 based on this idea of representation par excellence the the myth of 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 one looking at the the other as if it were one uh, excuse me one looking at oneself as if it were other um so this is the narciso series narciso secos and this is how they look when you when you walk into the gallery uh now other works um in 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 his repertoire also um have life cycles this is the piece that's called biographias um it's biographies it's it's actually uh what i'm showing you here are different uh film stills because the images themselves are a bit uh slow to play it's usually a five channel video we installed it with five channels um in phoenix um, as you can see these are images of faces um projected upon the floor at your feet uh, what you're looking at um, is this. Um, these are 
images of faces from an archive that he bought um, in the late 1970s um, called the Archivos Panam de, um, de, de, de Fotografía Panamericana, de, de Fotografía Panamericana. Um, and they were anonymous individuals that have been shot by fotocineros, which were these roving photographers that would shoot pictures of people at landmarks then to sell them to the person pictured. And what you're looking at is actually an image of a young girl and she will eventually take shape. Um, and if you wait and watch long enough, she will then flow back down the drain. Um, so what he did was to create a biography, a life. He recreated a life that was created half a century ago from a, on the basis of a single photograph. Um, and then uh, he he brings it back to life and gives it a cycle of, of life, of death, um, and then of rebirth. And if you watch long enough, she will flow back down the drain. And again, charcoal dust being so important here. And this piece is included in the Zuckerman as well. Um, as you'll see, this is in Phoenix. This is at the Blanton, again at the Blanton. Um, and this shows you another work that I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, and this is the installation of the Zuckerman. Um, in proximity to Proyecto para Memorial. Now, Project for Memorial, Proyecto para Memorial, is done with the same technique um, as Retrato, the, the first piece I showed you. Um, it was created in 2005 um, for the Venice Biennial. Um, and uh, what you're seeing here, instead of Oscar's face um, painted with a wet brush on hot cement, um, are the faces uh, of those he found in the obituaries. Um, of those disappeared in the, in the violence. Um, and of course, this will always remain a project for a memorial, this five channel installation. You, you, you'll, you'll watch his hand go from, from one channel uh, to another um, uh, as he frantically tries to finish the portraits before they drop, before they evaporate. Uh, it'll forever be a project because of his chosen method um, of production, water on hot cement. Now, also in this gallery is Sedimentaciones, and Sedimentaciones is, has a lot to do with um, Eitor Solitario, which is the solitary editor that's in the ZMA exhibition, except that Sedimentaciones is based on photographs that miraculously appear or disappear in this conceptual darkroom. Now here, the personal is telescoped into the universal and, and identity is telescoped into anonymity because these are not only pictures from Oscar's family, but also pictures from uh, the global, uh, from global history, from Colombian history. This is what I'm showing you is a solitary editor. Um, and here's a closer view from at the at the Zuckerman Museum of Art, and this is where you see it um, head on, and this is the installation view at the Blanton, um, and this is of course the piece when it, just when it first starts, as if he's playing a game of solitaire, uh, but using images um, instead of playing cards. Um, now these kinds of photographs uh, that 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 meld past and future and. Uh, kind of speak to a, a notion of time on a continuous loop. Um, in A Torso Dario, you'll see not only all these images uh, that have to do with Colombian history and of, of his own history, but you'll see Andy Warhol appear, you'll see Jackie O, you'll see Che Guevara, you'll see uh, Orson Welles, you'll see um, uh, all sorts of different people that perhaps you would recognize and I would not. Um, but if you watch long enough, uh, you'll get a glimpse of all of these different people who are connected in time uh, by Oscar's hand. 
Um, and he uh, he he said something that I think is very compelling. He said, um, I found a phrase by French photographer Eugène Dizidi that reads that more than photographing, we should biograph. For me, to biograph implies to encompass a life in an image and abandon the idea that the photo captures a single moment so that all of these photographs um, encompass an entire life lived and all the associations and uh, and relationships um, and hidden connections um, of that life with other lives. Um, it, and you'll see it also at, as we go forward. I'm gonna skip ahead because we are a little bit behind uh, to Azurez de Cristal through the glass. I wanted to show you this piece because uh, this piece took him 10 years to create. Um, he began it in 2008 and he ended it only in 2018. Uh, what you're looking at are uh, videos that are placed in photographic frames um, that are actually photographs of people who are either friends of his friends or acquaintance of his point of his acquaintances. Um, and what he's done is to be invited into their homes to film the reflection upon the glass itself. So that there are two times that are fused together here. There's the time the photograph was taken. Um, and there's the time that the video of the reflection of all the life that goes on beyond the photograph with the reflection in the glass uh, happens outside of the photograph because each photograph is of someone who's left or passed away. So this is a time where uh, there's someone who's missing and yet it reflects the, it reflects the lives of those who remain, um, which in Colombia, of course, is so very, um, is so very bittersweet. Um, now, I want to end with El Coleccionista, the piece de resistance um, of the Blanton and the Phoenix Art Museum exhibition. This is actually a, a five channel um, uh, video. Um, as you draw closer, you, you, you seem to see photographs um, upon a ledge, uh, but you realize there's a person there as well. Um, and it's actually Oscar and he's life size and you're able to follow him as he places these disparate photographs um, in uh, in line with others upon the shelf. Um, and this is what the video looks like from afar. Um, again, this notion of, of deberíamos biografiar en vez de fotografiar, we should biograph instead of photographing. The idea that all these associations and, and, and connections exist and that present and past become these malleable materi materials in his hands um, as he telescopes all of these different time periods and geographies together and connects them uh, just uh, by uh, putting images together upon a wall, upon a shelf. Um, it was very important to him that uh, the piece be understood as he originally understood it, as he originally intended, which is it's it's actually an autobiography in which you never see the face of the person who's being um, pictured, but you see the images who have had an impact upon him. Um, and with that, um, I would like to conclude just by saying that this is Oscar. Uh, we were trying out um, a piece, a new piece that he just uh, created called Fotografia or Photography, uh, which is actually um, a little screen that you have to look up into and you become part of the photograph. Um, and what I think is so compelling about many of the works that I've shown you this evening is that um, although the elements that he uses to create his work like water, um, dust, uh, fire, and light are cosmic elements that, su that, that supersede human life cycles, his insistence upon uh, creating portraits with them lend, lend them a fundamentally human dimension. Um, and as you've seen uh, the, in the ways that he's spliced photography with all these different kinds of media and all these different kinds of artistic experiences and artistic visual visual uh, representations. Um, he's a very he's he's a radical artist and yet he's a very humble artist. When he 
uh, was in Phoenix and I interviewed him. He said um, when speaking about his work, quote, very often when I talk about my work, I usually give the example of a man who crosses a mud path, leaving footprints as he walks. Once he passes, there can be two possibilities, that it rains again and his trail is erased, or the sun comes out and his mark is solidified. And Oscar has said to me that he intended that remark to be about memory, about the permanence or impermanence of memory, the permanence or impermanence of life or of, photo of photography and images themselves. But I think it can be about Oscar. I think it can be, um, it can be a quote, a, a parable of the, the kinds of impacts he's made um, upon the artistic scene um, in Colombia, um, and that he will continue to make for years to come, um, even with this unstable imagery that nevertheless remains indelible in our imaginations. Thank you very much.